Everyone saw it coming. If you're Never. in a survivor pool, there's probably a coin flip chance that you're now out because you probably picked the Cincinnati Bengals. Hello, me, uh, and also Dalton. New England coming to Cincinnati, getting the big upset. Good for Jacoby, first and foremost. Good for, I mean, just good like, for Gerard Mayo. Dude, too. Good for Gerard Mayo. Shout out to those dudes. I think a lot of what we're going to talk about here is obviously like Bengals negative because we figured that they should have won the game even with you know T Higgins out and everything like that. But hey, shout out to the New England Patriots. Let's take a look at them though. Let's look at the five highest graded New England Patriot players from this week, starting on the defensive side of things. Keon White. Elite 90.3 grade. I believe you had him as your shout out, sort of like breakout player for them when we were going through the division. So off to the right start here for Keon White. Two corners, Jonathan Jones and Marcus Jones are next. Uh, Jonathan Jones with an 86.1 overall grade, Marcus Jones an 80.2. Linebacker Jelani Tavai got a 78.7. And then five, the lone offensive player in the top five, it's running back Ramondre Stevenson with a 75.4. Jacoby Bursett. The end of the day, 62.8 overall grade. And then let's just flip over to the Bengals because I think that's where a lot of our conversations are going to start. So the top five grades for the Cincinnati Bengals. We start at the linebacker level. Logan Wilson had an elite 92.5, but outside of him, you know, it just it wasn't the best day for a lot of these guys. Number two, Cordell Volson, he had a 79.0 grade. Number three, wide receiver Jamar Chase earned a 73.9 grade in this game. Uh, Orlando Brown Jr., their offensive tackle at a 72.6, and then defensive tackle Zachary Carter, a 72.5 to round out of the top five. Joe Burrow, 62.9 PFF grade in this game. Uh, Dalton, what is your stat that told the story here from this one? Uh, for me, you know, I got a little concerned about this game when they announced that T. Higgins was out. And obviously, you already had Jamar Chase's issues with his contract and practicing for limited practicing, I think, for like three days. Right. right. So we already had those like questions all of a sudden going in about wide receivers. And those questions were fully warranted. Look, Jamar Chase was their only player with over 30 receiving grade or receiving yards, excuse me. They're, they just did not – they didn't have the weaponry in this game to compete. Uh, and if you covered Chase, it was a wrap. I mean, you have a team receiving grade of 51.7. Zach Moss dropped two balls. Tanner Hudson fumbled a ball at the one-yard line going in that would a touchdown that would have changed the game. Nobody, nobody as a receiver forced a missed tackle. Nobody, not one. And, and it's just – you know, you have T. Higgins is out. Tyler Boyd went to Tennessee. You've got young players like – Andre Yosivas and and Charlie Jones trying to step up. You have a bunch of young tight ends and Tanner Hudson. You have two rookie tight ends. I don't even think that played at all. And, and, and you just need to find something. Your offense can't just be on top of the fact that Joe Mixon had a great day in Houston. And not, and, not great. <laughs> not great optics there. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not. I mean, you have Zach Moss and Chase Brown. Zach Moss comes in and drops two balls. Joe Mixon was a relatively reliable receiver. This team cannot just be Jamar Chase and, and trying to find yards otherwise because even Joe Burrow can't overcome that. He was protected reasonably well yesterday, and it's better than we've seen some days out of the Bengals, right? They they need weapons, and if they don't have T. Higgins healthy and they don't have Jamar Chase really rolling, I'm not sure where the production's coming from, especially now with Tyler Boyd gone. And I know Boyd was the clear third option, but – he was at least reliable. He's another guy that Joe Burrow could look for on third down. The Patriots secondary won the battle of this game, and and the Bengals need to find answers really quick at receiver with, with going into Kansas City next week. Yeah, I, I think the Bengals also need to find answers when it comes to run defense because, holy cow, man, I mean, we went into this season saying that the Patriots' offensive line was a major issue for them. We're gonna, they even going to be able to run the football. They were able to a little bit last year. Pass protection was sort of a greater worry, but – Man, they took it to the Bengals in this one. When it comes to run defense, Logan Wilson, we mentioned who had the highest grade of any of the of the um, Bengals defensive players, he's the only player with a run defense grade yesterday above 70, above 70.0. Everybody was far below 70. B.J. Hill, 43.4, their interior defensive lineman. Uh, Sheldon Rankins, 57.2 run defense grade. I mean, th this is it's got to be better. And even from just a holding the line of scrimmage standpoint, Patriots, after... All of the games, they're now first in the league. Obviously, we have one game left. We got Monday Night Football left. But as of right now, they are first in the league in missed tackles forced, 13, which is a lot. And they're third in yards after contact. So the, pay, the, so the Bengals were not only missing tackles and like giving up yards on the ground via missed tackles. They were giving up yards after contact as well. Like it was just, it, it was all bad from the Bengals yesterday. 
for as much as I worried about some of the offensive stuff with them, which, let's be fair, they had a touchdown that was a beautiful ball to Mike Gusecki that just kind of barely moved on him and it ended up getting called back. The very next play, Burrow throws a strike to, to Hudson, Tanner, 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 Hudson. Tanner Hudson, and he's walking into the end zone, and I can't even remember who punched it out, but an incredible job of somebody just going for the ball, punching it out right before the goal line. So it's like, obviously, they score that touchdown. They could win that game. They're up seven. They're up a point, whatever. And I think the game's totally different if either of those touchdowns work, but they didn't. And so I don't think the sky is falling with Cincinnati, but it's a very frustrating game knowing that yeah, they don't have Joe Mixon anymore. Yeah, they don't have DJ Reader anymore. Yeah, they didn't have T. Higgins. But you felt like this team should have been stronger than that. And it just felt like everything that could go wrong for the Bengals went wrong. And it looked like a team that's just not in sync right now. You mentioned a guy, DJ Reader. And when he was in Cincinnati, there was a there was a heavy split between when he was on the field, they were pretty much a top five run defense. And when he was off the field, especially with injury, if he was out for whole games, they were in the bottom like six or eight. I forget how far down it was, but DJ Reader being on the field was a lot of times the difference in their run defense being a good or a bad unit. And obviously now he's in Detroit. That's the one, that's the loss that would concern me the most because he was just such a force inside. Double teams were mandatory when Reader was out there and they're going to be, they're mandatory in Detroit when he's out there too. He's one of the best run defenders in football. I don't think he's a guy that the traditional stats would say, oh, he's the flashiest guy. He's a household name, but he's one of the most impactful players in the NFL and Cincinnati losing him and, and playing the way they played yesterday in run defense is a massive concern. It showed, no doubt about it. They just they did not seem ready for it. And if you want to move on to most impressive and most disappointing, I'll start with most disappointing. Zach Taylor. Bengals have not won a season opener since 2021. Like, the season starts with week one, and it feels as though the Bengals, over the last couple of years, they've had some stinkers out of the gate. And I don't know if it's just how they're handling things in the preseason, if they're just not going full throttle because they don't want guys to get hurt. Or like, Obviously, there's a couple of things at play. You have guys in and out of the lineup. You know, Higgins, you know, his, his contract situation and obviously Chase's contract situation as well, kind of coming down to the 11th hour with him even being able to play. So there's a lot of things that were uh, at play here for the Bengals, but it's just another year where they were not mentally ready for week one, and I think that's really frustrating. So that was disappointing for me. Most impressive, though, I'll just round it out, Ramondre Stevenson. I talked about, hey, the Bengals' run defense has to be better, but we got to give Ramondre Stevenson some credit because as the Patriots were faltering last year, he felt like the one guy who was like, all right, you know, maybe they won't get blown out too much this week because they got Ramondre Stevenson. This week, 120 yards, 118 of them came after contact. This dude is a stud. Tank. 10 yeah. missed tackles force this week. 4.7 yards after contact per attempt average. Bengals got to be better on run defense, def uh, in run defense, but you got to give Ramondre Stevenson his flowers. Hell of a game from him. It looked like a game with Belichick coaching it, didn't it? Let's just play defense and run the ball and milk the clock and, and get to the end of the game ahead, right? I, I mean, they they really – Stevenson was – he was a brutal force. He's just such a physical player. And that would be a concern for me with the Bengals is it seems like every time in these week one losses, they get out physical. Talk about playing teams like Baltimore and, and Cleveland and, and now New England. They just – they need to come out and just play more physical, right? But I'll tell you a guy who was playing physical for New England, Keon White. You mentioned him as their highest graded player. Two and a half sacks, a 90.8 pass rush grade. And for a guy who's 290 pounds, Trevor, all three sacks that he was involved in, he's in a two-point stance. He's moving all over the place. Look at that. He's off the edge. He's inside over guards. He's standing up. There's times he's standing up in the A-gap. You have to – not only is he really, really good – you have to find him, and he's a real schematic problem as well as a talent problem. He is moving all over the place, and, and he's getting into the category. What I saw yesterday wasn't just good; it was freakish. Six five and two ninety. I draft him. Six five and two ninety, and getting in a two point stance and dominating, dominating an offense, an experienced offensive line that for the most part has played well, uh, or at least has played together for a long time. He is just he's a guy who. When you shift protections and you get to the line of scrimmage and you're playing New England, you better find him because he's not going to be in just one spot the entire game. He lined up in just about every spot imaginable. So Keon White, just amazing. And sticking to the receiver theme, the most disappointing thing for me, we only saw Jermaine Burton on the field for four snaps, and he ran one route. And, and, and in a day when T. Higgins was hurt. Yeah, this and, was supposed to be him stepping up. And did we not see a lot of good from Burton in the preseason? We did. And weren't all the reports from practice really good from Burton in training? It seemed like it. It feels like everything was everything was coming up Burton. Yep. 
And we get to the first game with T. Higgins out and the Bengals struggling, and he plays four snaps. So I, I'm curious what went into that exactly and why, you know, you have guys like Yossi Voss and Charlie Jones out there who are good players and are good route runners, but Burton brings the home run ability. Even just to get get the safeties off me, even if he's just out there as the speed threat running a 4-3, get the safeties off me. I, I, I'd be very curious to hear why Jermaine Burton only, only played four snaps. I'm not hitting any sort of panic button with the Cincinnati Bengals yet, obviously because we've seen them struggle out of the gate in years past and then obviously be able to play well. But these are the things that it feels like has to get ironed out with this team. But hey, again, shout out to New England Patriots. They came into Cincinnati, took care of business.